Hello, Mr. MacPaul, a poetry fan. <clears throat> so, if you are a fan of poetry, or you might be a fan of, like, rap, or just playing around with words. Um, I often think that when we define poetry, we may think of very old, dead white men. Although some of those dead old white men could uh, think of some great lyrics. But you might think of old-fashioned stuff and uh i think that you know poetry it doesn't have to be old-fashioned it can be extremely contemporary it can be about the now and poetry is such a great mechanism or art for self-expression it's often used by humans all over the world in all cultures to be poetic is to be human so why do i love poetry well often people think of rhymes and whilst these are beautiful and moving like in sonnets or humorous like in limericks um well, whilst they are beautiful and moving like that, I often think that free verse, where you can let, just let your emotions just flow right out of you. Yeah, I think that's the best. Because if we're honest with ourselves, emotions do not conform to order. Now, when you have emotional feelings, they don't come in an ordered way. So poems are great to express uh, innermost thoughts and things, and there is nothing more human than poetry. All right? Um, so why do humans like poetry? Well, it helps us understand the world around us. It's a very complex world out there. And it's been utilised in lots of different cultures. So, poems have been used for recording history. Beowulf is a great example of that. And the Nordic sagas and Eddas are um, famous poems of the Vikings, basically. You think of the Vikings. They used to keep a lot of their history in epic poems. So, Basically, poems were memorization devices. People would recite a poem, they'd memorize it. And in this way, information about families could travel generations before the written word was used. Now, the Vikings did have runes, but they mainly wrote them on stone. They didn't have uh, much paper, if any. So this made poems extremely valuable. Now, listen to this man uh, reading aloud here. I'm not going to pick on it now, but give it a watch and listen to him reading Old English and just listen to how beautiful it sounds, the ancient old language there. Poetry is also used in religion. Now the Quran, which is the uh, most important book in Islam, it's, it's essentially, it's one long poem. It's, it was, you know, it's in Arabic verse. I say, when I say it's written, it wasn't really written, it was recited. The Quran was recited by the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And he, um, he had memorized the entire Quran, and other people had memorized the entire Quran before it was written. So it's used to store information, it's used for religious purposes, it's used for historical purposes. It's a very, very important mechanism for expression, memorization, even prayer. I would listen to that Adan, it is beautiful. And the greatest thing about I used to live in Saudi, by the way, I taught out there for a year, and it allows you to. I don't know, if you just listen to the Quran being recited, it is a beautiful thing to listen to. And it's odd because it's not in our language, just like that old English isn't in the language that we speak today. And yeah, it just sounds so good to the ear. So how do you write a poem? Well, there's so many different poems you can write. So you can write sonnets, you can give them a Google, they're 14 lines long. Shakespeare wrote a lot of those, I think 156. You can write pantoums or limericks, but they don't always have to be that ordered. So one of my um, favorite ways of writing poetry is free verse. And this is uh, a poem I write here. This is actually a sonnet. So I was going to say that I love free verse, but this is actually a sonnet and it's inspired by nature. When I was in Cyprus on holiday, I opened the door and there was this dove and it was sitting in um, my balcony. Just amazing. When I opened the door, it reacted and it flew. It just flew into the sunlight. It was just so beautiful. So I wrote a poem about that there. You can see it's on that slide. And my daughter also likes poems. So when we went to Cyprus, my daughter wrote this poem here. And she was really young. She was only about eight when she wrote that. What an amazing poem for a little girl to write. And the children have such wonderful imagination. And if you're really stuck, you can write a pantoum. I like pantoums because they're repeating. So if you look at here, 
the first, the second line here is repeated there. Okay, the third line isn't repeated. The fourth line is repeated here. So what you do, you kind of get um, so it's like two for the price of one. When you write a line, you've also written another line of your poem because they can double up. So I think pantoums are a great way. Of course, if you're really, really stuck, you can use your five senses. What do you see? That's your dominant sense. What can you hear? What can you touch? What can you smell? If you want to write about your environment, which or nature, or what's around you, that's one of the best ways to write poetry. And a really, really good link I've got here is rhymer. So if you're trying to find a rhyme, you can pop a word in there, and you can come up with words that rhyme with it, which, are use, which is useful. Now, I said I like to write poetry, and you can write them on many different topics. Love. And you can write them about religion. Um, you can write them about war. You can write them about sadness. You can write them about absolutely anything. Okay, so there are many different ways of writing poetry about death, up to, as a memorial to write about someone that you love. I wrote a poem about my grandfather when he passed away, my granddad Derek. So I don't want to push you in a particular direction. I would love it if you just wrote a poem um, after watching this. And you can use those useful uh, slides which I've put together just to write something, a flea of your imagination, anything that comes to mind. I think that would be um, that would be great. And the poem that I showed you before by my daughter, there's no, there's no rhymes in that, no rhymes whatsoever. And yeah, it's one of my favourite ever poems. Obviously, my daughter wrote it, so I'm going to be a bit biased, but... I just think free flow poems are probably the best. They're the most expressive, the most pure, in a way. No rules, man. No rules. Right. Have a lovely day. And if you do write a poem, please email it to me. I'd love to see it.